Good morning, Curtis. I recently saw a YouTube video with Richard Perkins and Charles Dowding where they enthusiastic agreed with each other that compost is not fertilizer. I agree. <laughs> they didn't really go into the detail, but I assumed they meant compost buildings, build soil, not so much providing plant nutrients. Are you able to give your take on that? So yeah, hundred percent agree with those guys on that. Um, that's what it is for me. You know, it's, it is, if you're buying in compost like I am, and actually it's probably the same if you're building compost like Rich, like um, Charles Dowding does. Richard's more manure based, but uh, Charles Dowding is building his compost. At least that's that's my knowledge of his content. Um, you can't really control the NPK and micronutrient levels that easily. Uh, so it's kind of hard to be consistent with those. Um, you can use granular or dried for you can make dried fertilizers and be a lot more consistent with your NPK levels. You know, when something isn't alive, it's more like, you know, okay. So for example, a guy like John Jevons, um, who was one of my early inspirations when I got into market farming, uh, even before, like just homestead gardening, he, he has this technique of making um, a a dried fertilizer out of alfalfa and it's basically a nitrogen based fertilizer for him. And he's, you can fairly, and I've bought that product before you, I used to use uh, alfalfa pellets. It was one of the first fertilizers I used on my farm. I forget what the end rating is, but it's something it's like four or five, maybe it's even three. I, I, I forget what is offhand, but you can control the NPK levels of a dried fertilizer. Cause that, that, product is in a stasis it's no longer moving anywhere whereas if it's in a compost it's constantly moving because a compost is alive so it's hard to get it. that's at least how i feel about it it's hard to get a consistent and reliable npk uh, and micronutrients as well from something like compost compost is better just to build soil but the thing is that's neat that i've experienced and i don't know if these guys agree with me on this or not but the neat thing about living soil when you are going to a predominantly living soil, say you're 12% past or more in organic matter, that compost, that soil is living and breathing much greater than soil that didn't have that level of organic matter in. Meaning that that living ecosystem can provide a lot of those NP, well, not necessarily, it's more like nitrogen, uh, the P and the K, I'm not so sure exactly on. Those things are often kind of set because they're mineral based in your soil. But the N for certain, soil cycles nitrogen. Good living soil breathes and exhales uh, the things that we breathe in the air, such as nitrogen. And that can make it available to plants. I'm not a soil scientist on this. This is just what I've experienced with working with living soils. And it's, it's, it's a bit of science that I understand. Uh, but it's me just more interpreting what I'm seeing and feeling. So don't, don't get too hung up on the science behind what I'm saying. But uh, that's been my experience with plants is that the, the, the more alive your soil is, the less you need to rely on fertilizers. Now, that doesn't mean you don't have to use them. It just means you can rely less on them because a really, really fertile soil provides a lot to your plants. So that that's my thinking on it and and i and i totally uh, agree with what uh, both those gentlemen said